What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today is the day we have been waiting for. A lot of viewers waiting to see this one. What we have here is the trans transmission cooler from a gentleman by the name of Nick. GenuineCoolingSystems.com. I'll put all the links down below for you guys as always. So um, this is a topic that's debated a lot about our trucks. Why Toyota removed the transmission cooler? That's not what we're here to do. We're not going to debate it. I'm not going to talk about whether it's needed or not. That's up for you guys to decide. But I'm going to show you. Um, Nick makes partial kits and then he makes complete kits. We have a complete kit here. Um, so I'm going to show you guys everything that comes with it and show you how to install it. I'd rather be safe than sorry guys. It's, that's why we're putting it on. If you're new to the channel, this is a 2020 Platinum that we're building. Um, check out all the other videos we have up and running uh, on the truck. But you can probably see my boat in the background there behind the truck. We do a lot of towing with it, summertime especially, making trip to New York. I'd rather be safe than sorry and get a transmission cooler on this truck just to keep those temps down a little bit. So let me get this uh, uh, unboxed. I'll show you everything that comes with it and uh, we'll get into the install. All right, we got everything unboxed. Let me give you a quick look. So we have the Hayden heavy duty transmission oil cooler itself right here. We have the bracket to hold it in place on the truck, the hard lines, the soft hoses, some protection right there, the thermostat itself, which looks like this, and Toyota OEM part that Nick includes with the kit, part numbers on the box right there. We have all of the hardware needed to get the job done, the inlet hose, the outlet hose and he also includes some automatic transmission fluid so if you get the total kit from nick as you can see you get you basically get everything to get the job done other than the tools of course and um you, you may need a pump to get this once we get the job done and and we have to check the levels of the transmission fluid you may need a pump to get that in there but other than that if you get the total kit from him well worth it in my opinion he deals with all toyota oem parts other than the aftermarket um cooler itself of course but uh yeah oem parts from toyota and he includes everything you need to get the job done so let's get into it before we get started guys i gotta introduce you to the newest helper in the judge household <laughs> my buddy blue we just rescued a four-year-old husky akita mix and he is my sidekick he's attached to my hip 24 7 you guys will be seeing him on a lot of videos he's always out here with me wherever i go he goes so all right to the install um first thing you're going to want to do remove your skid plate i already have my rci off if you're interested or don't really know about that rci we do have a video on the channel installing and reviewing that that thing is a beast highly recommend it once you get your skid plate off you're going to go ahead and want to remove your grill assembly in order to do that there's just two pop clips if you've never done it before one here one on the other side right there four 10 millimeter bolts right here again 10 millimeter pop those out if you have the tss safety system you can go ahead and just remove that panel and unplug the tss safety sensor right there once you have all of that done you can um the grill will kind of pop up over the lip and you can pull the grill off it's only held on by tabs all right so i'm going to go ahead and get that done and i'll pick back up with you once you have the grill out of the way, you have to go ahead and remove the radiator shroud on the passenger side of the truck. Mine looks a little bit different than what you're going to see. This is what the stock one looks like. All right, so it's going to be sitting in the same exact place. Mine's a little bit different because I have the Stillman True Power um, Stage 2 cold air intake on the truck that has the front air dam, the front air inlet right there. So mine just looks a little bit different, but same exact procedure. It's only held on by pop clips. There's one two three four and then five six there's two down here that you can't see so just go ahead and get a small screwdriver or a pry tool and pop those clips out of there once you have the radiator shroud removed again this is what yours will look like if it's factory you're going to go ahead and drill one and a quarter inch holes two of them i'm going to use a step bit just like this you can use whatever you want to use just one and a quarter inch is the size on the factory piece you're going to want to drill one right here and right here all right, so I'm going to go ahead and do that on my Stillen shroud here um, in the same spots. Obviously, mine looks a little bit different, but I'm going to go ahead and drill them two holes using the step bit. And the reason you're going to do that is um, Nick wants you to install these grommets to run the hoses through. So once we drill those two holes, I'll put these two grommets in. I'll show you what it looks like. All right, you guys can see we have the two one and a quarter inch holes drilled right here with the grommets in place. 
All right, this top one's a little bit cockeyed just because there's this still in shroud has a little bit of a curve to it. It's not flat like the stock one, but I did check with the hose if you have this still in um, intake, don't worry about it. The hose goes right through still. All right, so that's what it would look like on the still in shroud. I did drill the holes on the stock piece as well, just so you can see it. Just make sure they're parallel to each other, you know, straight up and down, and that's where they would go on the stock shroud there and there pop the grommets in you're ready to go once you have that done go ahead and replace this on the truck before we go any further one thing i forgot to mention you do want to make sure your truck is sitting perfectly level wherever you're working on it i got very fortunate my garage is level i checked the truck in multiple spots um, using what i did was i used a three foot level got underneath the truck checked it on the frame and again i checked in multiple spots you want the vehicle to be level not only front to back but also side to side if it's not level for you do whatever you can to get it level whether you have to put a boards underneath the tire or use jacks whatever you want to do just make sure the vehicle is level before you begin this procedure that's going to come into play at the end when we have to check the fluid level of the truck um, after we get everything buttoned up and uh, finished with the install so go ahead and make sure your truck is level before you do anything okay once you have the radiator shroud back in place the next step is to secure the hard lines this part was near impossible for me to show you guys while I was actually doing it just because there's very little room to work down here and the lighting is not the best small spaces so let me just show you what I did it's not hard at all um, but let me just show you what you have to do so you take the hard lines and there's on one end of the hard lines you're gonna see a rubber sleeve on one of the lines that's the that's the side that's gonna go towards the front of the truck all right so you get the hard line down underneath here the truck and let me show you where we're at this is the warmer we're gonna be working with that in a minute um, here's the transmission pan where all your transmission fluid sits here's the cross member your oil pan is just the other side of this cross member so you have to take the hard lines and feed it up over again with that rubber sleeve going towards the front up over the cross member up over the oil pan you can see my hard lines right here one and two okay so just kind of gives you an idea where they have to go and when you're doing this you have to kind of be patient just kind of twist them through there you kind of have to snake them and wind them through there because again it's a very small space which is why it was near impossible for me to show you this while i was actually doing it all right so just snake them up over the oil pan you have to start back here up over the cross member up over the oil pan and work them all the way up through the front let me take you up there let me just slide that out of the way i'll give you as best of a look as i can so again here's the oil pan the hard lines are up above there fed all the way up through here and they're going to connect i'll give you a better look here but that's where you start them I'll turn those lights off because I know they're they're kind of glaring in the camera. Um, but that's how you start feeding the hard lines through. So let me reposition those lights and I'll give you a, a look at where they come out and how you attach them. Okay, now we're looking at the front of the truck, obviously, passenger side. So the hard lines are going to snake up through. If you come down here, here's the sway bar. They're right up above, up in here. You can see them right there. That's where the that's where they're going to end up. Okay, now you're gonna secure those with the two 12 millimeter hex flange bolts um, that come in your kit from Nick. I'll put a picture up on the screen. You get a 10 millimeter flange bolt and there's only one of them in the kit, but then you get two 12, 12 millimeter flange bolts. Um, those are the two that you need to secure these hard lines. So let me give you a look at where you actually secure these two. Once I show you these two spots, guys, where you actually secure the hard lines, it'll actually give you a little bit better of an idea of how you have to kind of snake them through, too. It's not hard. Just be patient. You kind of have to wiggle them and, and twist them a little bit to get them through um, that small spot where they're going. All right, so the first spot you're going to secure them, here's the oil pan, obviously, where you drain your oil from. If you see right up here where I'm pointing, that's one of the 12 millimeter flange bolts okay it's a threaded spot that 12 millimeter flange is just going to screw right into it so that's one spot where you're going to secure those hard lines the other spot is up the front so let's take a look at that okay the second spot if we come back in here and again you can see where the hard lines came out right here right back here where i'm pointing 
me get you a look here. Right here, where I'm wiggling my finger, there's another threaded spot right there. And that's where the front secure, the, that 12 millimeter flange bolt is gonna secure the front of the hard lines. All right, again, just a threaded spot that you're gonna feed. You can see the bolt right there. That's where you're gonna feed. Um, and again, th that's why this, is, this was impossible for me to do and catch on camera while I was actually doing it. There was just no way. <laughs> it's too small of a spot. Um, I would recommend, you know, if you have a smaller wrench to get up in here, especially this one, the, the, the one back by the oil pan is a little bit easier to get to and tighten down. This one, you, you need, you know, a smaller wrench would definitely come in handy. Again, 12 millimeter, secure it right there. Those are the only two spots that hold the hard lines. All right, um, and if, you, if you're having trouble finding that spot, you, you really shouldn't. When you get under your truck with the light, you're gonna see the spot, it's by the alternator. Um, again, it's a threaded hole there, you, you really can't miss it. The other way you can see it pretty good is if you come out here to the passenger wheel and you look through there. Let me get my finger by it just to point it out for you. Uh, let me get my hand up there. See my fingers up there? That's, this is the bolt right here. All right, so that's the spot, that's the threaded spot for the second 12 millimeter bolt to secure those hard lines. Once you have them secured, the next step is preparing to get the thermostat installed. Next step is to remove the warmer here, which is held on by three 12 millimeter, 12 millimeter bolts. There's one here, one up above it, up in there and then one on the other side. You can't miss them. They're right out in the open. So go ahead and take those three 12, mill 12 millimeter bolts off. That'll take the warmer off and give us access to the spacer behind it, which we're gonna replace the spacer with the thermostat. Um, now just be prepared when you do take this off, it's gonna drip some um, transmission fluid. So what I'm gonna do is just a little tip. Um, I'm gonna kind of wrap it in a towel or shop towels as I loosen it just to try to catch it. I also have a pan and a, a rag underneath just to try to keep it as nice and clean as possible make clean up easier when we're all done so i'm going to go ahead and get those three bolts removed and i'll show you what we have to do with the thermostat okay guys as you can see once you remove those um three 12 millimeter bolts this is the spacer that's going to come out of there now when you look up in there you can see there's two let me just make sure this isn't going to drip all over the place just gonna kind of wipe it off here. Might keep running out slightly, but okay. So the spacer, when you pull it out of there, looks like this, okay? There should be two O-rings in these two spots. They hung up up there. So I'm just gonna reach up and grab those O-rings. All right, you wanna get them out of there because they're gonna be, um, you, don't, you don't want them up there. So just reach up. You can see there's one that should have been in there. And here is the other, okay? So this is the piece we're gonna be replacing with the thermostat. All right, so let me put this down, grab my thermostat, and we'll get, the, get, the, get that secured in place. All right, guys, here's the new piece that you get in the kit. It's the thermostat, looks like this. You wanna make sure it's pinned open. And what I mean by that is, you can see how this pin right here is keeping there's a there's a knob right in here that you can push in um you know with a screwdriver or whatever you have you can push that in and then you can take this pin and slide it through to to hold um the thermostat in the open position okay so just make sure that's pinned open for right now and there's two o-rings on the back that you can see which is why you don't need those old o-rings from the from the spacer that we removed all i'm going to do is i'm just going to take a little bit of transmission fluid and just kind of coat the o-rings just like that to make sure it's clean you don't want any kind of dirt obviously getting in your transmission or anything like that so all right so i just coated the two o-rings like so and now all we're going to do is take this and put it in the exact split in the exact spot where the spacer was that we removed so you're just going to put it up here and the other thing too is just make sure I did this already, but just take your rag, a clean rag, and just kind of wipe off the surfaces up there just to make sure everything is nice and clean, um, you know, where this, where the thermostat is going to be mounted up there. And I also wiped off the, um, the heater here, the inside of it, all right? So just get in position. And again, not a whole lot of room to work, but 
you're just going to put this up in the spacer's place. And then mount the heater. Once you have it in position, once you have it kind of lined up, grab your three 12 millimeter bolts and secure them back into place. Now you might have to kind of wiggle it around until you, until you get it lined up properly to get these bolts restarted. But once you get one, the other ones could, should kind of just fall into place here. And I think we got lucky. Yep, that first one's already secured in there. So, all right, let me just start the other two 12 millimeter bolts and I'll get them three tightened back down and we'll move on to the next step. Okay guys, tip number one, learn from my mistakes. <laughs> I actually took the thermostat back off and popped the outlet and the inlet hose onto the thermostat. I had it. I had the thermostat secured up there, and man, I just could not get my hands up there to secure these hoses properly on the nipples of the thermostat. All right. So when you're putting these inlet, I'm sorry, the outlet and the inlet hoses on, that's exactly how you want them to go. The packaging from Toyota is labeled inlet and outlet. They are not interchangeable. They are shaped a little bit differently. So the outlet goes on the top nipple when you're looking at the thermostat. The inlet hose goes on the bottom okay and then you also you can see here there's like black um, electrical tape on this on one side not on the other you want the black electrical tape to go towards the thermostat okay so again black electrical tape black electrical tape then there's none on the other side two sides of the hoses all right so go ahead and connect these make your life a little bit easier connect these to um the thermostat before you pop this up there and you also you're just going to use these clamps that come in the kit um, very simple you just use needle nose pliers or any kind of pliers to um, squeeze the um, to squeeze it together and it, um, you slide it over the hose um, so just make sure you put those clamps on before you put them onto the thermostat and then just secure them in place all right so make yourself make your life a little bit easier pop these hoses on there with a couple clamps before you put the thermostat in place all right, guys, let me give you a quick look at what it should look like after you have the thermostat mounted and the inlet and outlet hoses, hoses ran. So here's the warmer. The thermostat is behind it, mounted like I showed you. Definitely recommend installing the inlet and outlet hoses before you put that thermostat on. It made life way easier. <laughs> All right, and then the three, just so you guys know, the three 12 millimeter bolts that hold the warmer and the thermostat in place, they should be tightened to 15 foot pounds or 180 inch pounds, the same thing. All right, just so you know what they should be tightened to. Um, let's get you a look at the hoses. So here you can see up here where the, with the white sleeves on them, there's one here and then there's one up above it. Um, that's the inlet and outlet hose. Again, the inlet hose is here on the bottom. That's attached to the bottom nipple on the thermostat. The outlet hose up there up above it, that goes to the top nipple on the thermostat. And you can see how they kind of route down from the thermostat. They go through this bracket right here um, between the bracket and the transmission. And then you can see, I'll give you, let's go on the other side of the cross member. And you can get a good look at how they're mounted to, or, or where they're connected to the hard lines right here. All right, so just make sure you use these clamps on both sides, on both hoses. And uh, make sure there's a little lip on the hard lines where you push the hoses down too. Make sure the clamps are, are on there nice and tight and you're good to go. So, all right. Definitely recommend putting these inlet and outlet hoses on before you attach the thermostat. Made life a lot easier. All right, let's get to mounting the cooler. Next step is to get the cooler ready to be mounted to the truck. So you're going to take the cooler itself. It's going to sit. This is going to be the top where it has the two openings. You're going to attach it to the bracket using the supplied 11 millimeter nuts and um, I'm sorry, the 11 millimeter bolts and the nylon nuts. So you can see there's eight different mounting spots, four on the bottom, four on the top to secure the cooler. Now the bottom, you're also gonna be securing the Adele clamps with the longer of the two pieces of hose. So the two pieces of hose that you get in the kit, 
there's going to be one of them that's longer. That's going to be the hose that goes on the right side of the cooler, and it's going to be attached to the bottom with the Adele clamps. And I'll show you what, what I mean once it's all put together. So I'm just going to take the bracket, take the cooler, the supplied nut and bolts with the washers, and we're just going to go ahead around and secure the cooler to the bracket. I'm going to start at the top. I'll save the um, the bottom with the hose and the Adele clamps for last. So you're just going to take the um, the bolt and a washer, slide it through. Another washer on the back. Get the nut on there, and we'll tighten them all down. I'm just going to get them all started, and then I'll show you what it looks like once we're once we're finished up. All right guys, so this is what it should look like when you have the cooler attached to the bracket. All right, again, longer of the two hoses secured to the back like that with the Adele clamps positioned like that. And you wanna leave yourself enough hose. You can, it, it's kind of tight, but you can slide this back and forth some if you need to adjust it. But you wanna have the hose to where it's kind of like almost at the top of the cooler. Um, that way we can make that connection on that side. So let me show you what we need to do to get the cooler and bracket attached to the truck. So we need to remove the left horn, the horn on the passenger side of the vehicle. It's a 12 millimeter bolt right here. Go ahead and take that off. Just gonna set the horn down out of the way. To relocate the horn, you're gonna take the bracket that comes in your kit. So it looks like that, nice and simple. There's a hole right here, and you're just gonna take the bracket, and you're gonna take one of, you should have two of the 11 millimeter nut and bolt setups left. You're gonna take one and secure the bracket to this spot here. So once you have the bracket secured on there, you're gonna take this 10 millimeter bolt right here. You're gonna go ahead and remove that. It's right to the left of the latch here. Once you have that 10 millimeter removed, you're gonna take the new, the last flange bolt that you have in the kit. That's your, you're gonna replace that 10 millimeter bolt with this one and you're gonna ground the horn. So you're just gonna secure one end right here Then you're gonna take your last 11 millimeter bolt that comes in your kit with the washer, put the bolt through the bottom hole of the relocation bracket, and then put the horn on the back of the bracket, then take your grounding cable and hook that up behind there before finally taking your nut and securing it on the back. Okay, so when you're all done, this is how it should look. You can see the horn relocation bracket, that black bracket that I showed you is coming down right there. It's secured, the horn is secured to the bottom hole the top hole we secured the bracket there and then the grounding cable again you took your new 10 millimeter um flange bolt and um grounded the cable right there this cable does come in the kit so you grounded it there on that side brought it down and then grounded it in the back hopefully you can see that all right so that's how you relocate the horn to get it out of the way to give you enough room over here to mount the cooler. All right, so for the top spot, you're gonna use the bolt, 35 millimeter bolt looks like this with the washer. Just go ahead and put the cooler up here. And again, you're gonna use that spot right up there. This is a threaded hole. So put it through the bracket and then you're gonna wanna take the spacer that's provided in the kit. Put that on the back like that get the cooler up there and start screwing it in. Once you get this screwed in, you don't have to tighten it all the way just yet because we're gonna wanna put that other spot down in, down in there as well. 
but once we get this screwed in enough, you're going to take the nut and put it on the back just to secure it, just to make sure it's nice and nice and secure. So now we can take this bolt here that comes in the kit with the washer and secure it to that bottom spot down by my rock light where I showed you. Okay, got it secured to the truck. You can see right down in there, there's that spacer that I mentioned. All right, and then it's secured down here with the shorter of the two 13 millimeter bolts that come in the kit. So at this point, now we're ready to start routing the hoses through the um, the radiator shroud, those two holes that we drilled in the shroud earlier in the video. The four foot hose that's on the bottom and those Adele clips, that's gonna go up and through the top hole in the shroud. It just helps with kinking. And then the three foot hose, the shorter of the hose that you're not even seeing here yet, I actually have it over here on the ground, um, that's gonna go through the bottom hole of the shroud. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get that done and I'll show you what it looks like. So you're just gonna take these clamps, looks like this, take a pair of pliers, Needle nose is fine, but this is just what I have handy. Just squeeze down like that, put it over the end, and let go. All right, and that secures it on there. When you're going to attach the hose to the fittings, you just squeeze those together again. It'll loosen it up and allow you to slide the, um, the hose over the fittings. When you, after you get the, the clamps on all four ends, one, two, three, four on the other two ends. You can see if you look down right through here, you'll see the other end of those hard lines where these hoses are gonna attach to. So just feed the two hoses down, down through there and uh, we'll be ready to attach to the hard lines down there. Now, coming from the cooler, this is a bi-directional cooler. What that means is, doesn't matter what, what hose from here connects to what hard line on this end. If you remember on the thermostat side, it did matter. Here, it does not matter. So either one of these hoses can go to either side of the hard line down below. All right, so let me show you what we got. Coming in here, right up in there is where we have the connections between the hoses coming down and the hard lines. All right, now those connections, those hoses are very difficult to get on those on this end of the hard lines. So what you wanna do just to kind of help you out a little bit, just take a little bit of uh, transmission fluid and line, like just take it, you know, put it around the, the opening of the hose, um, both hoses, and uh, even on, like on the inner rim, just to kind of give you a little bit of lubrication to get them down because on the other end, on the thermostat end, they went on pretty easily. This end, that's pretty, they're pretty difficult to get on. But uh, just wanted to give you a look at the connections right there. All right, and then right here, you can see, this is that rubber sleeve that I was mentioning earlier in the video. When you're feeding the hard lines through, up, you know, through over the frame and everything, that's that rubber sleeve. You wanna make sure that end comes towards the front of the truck. All right, so we are all connected on the bottom end. Let's go up back up to the cooler and uh, we'll make our connections up there. To make our connections up top, you're just gonna take the two pieces that look like this in the kit and you're going to, you can see there's a green O-ring on both of them, okay? So you're just gonna take them and put them in these two locations, screw them down into these locations until you wanna make sure you cannot see the O-ring. So just take an adjustable wrench or whatever you have, tighten them down. You wanna make sure they're good and secure so you cannot see the O-rings. Before you do that, this Hayden cooler comes with, there's just like a little protection, a couple of protective rubber pieces in here. So just go ahead and grab them and pull them out. They just look like that. All right, it's just to make sure that nothing gets in there during shipping or anything. There's one on each side. So just take those out and then you can take your two pieces here, your two adapters, and screw them down into these locations. Again, you can just kind of use your hands to get them all the way down to the O-rings, and then you'll have to take an adjustable or, I'm not sure what size these are yet. I'll put it up on the screen. I'll check for you and put it up on the screen. But you just want to get them screwed down tight enough to where you can't see those O-rings. So once you have these two adapters snugged down so you can't see those O-rings, you're gonna take the two pieces that look like this in your kit, 
This end is obviously going to go into the hose. And you're going to do one on each side. And then this end is going to screw onto the top of here like that. All right. And then again, just to make your life a little easier, I am going to take a little bit of transmission fluid and put, um, you know, around the opening and, and inside the opening of the two hoses just to make it a little bit easier to slide over um, the nipples here. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and get that done. All right, guys, here's how it should look when you're all done. All right. As you can see, you cannot see those O-rings that I mentioned before. And then you just connect these U pieces, or these U adapters. I'm not exactly sure what they're called, um, but obviously you can't <laughs> you can't miss them. So you just screw them down onto those uh, this adapter here, and then connect the hose to the other side. And then again, just make sure you have these clamps nice and tight up on the edge of the hose. All right, to hold them in place. So that's how both sides should look. That's how the whole unit should look. Everything is tightened up down below. So now we have to put some transmission fluid into the transmission because we need to check the level now that we have the cooler in place. So let me show you how we get that done. Okay, to add transmission fluid to the transmission, here's the warmer that we were working with before and the thermostat inside of it. On the other side of the transmission, right up, uh, let me see if I can get you a look, right here, it's the only, it's a 24 millimeter bolt that is the refill plug okay um so it's again 24 millimeter it's the only one on this side of the transmission you can't miss it go ahead and take that off and that's where we're going to fill the transmission that's where we're going to pump the transmission fluid into all right guys so we're going to pump one and a half quarts um and again he does send these two quarts to you included with the kit we're going to pump one and a half quarts into that refill plug that i just showed you in order to do that i'm going to use one of these fluid pumps for quarts and gallons i picked this up it was like seven bucks at my local auto zone very uh it makes it very easy to do seven bucks well worth it all right so you're just going to take this out of the package screw it on top of the court and it'll allow you it'll allow you to pump the fluid into the uh, transmission pan once you have the one and a half quarts of transmission fluid pumped in go ahead and take your refill plug and screw it back in. This should be tightened to 29 foot pounds. All right guys, the install is complete. The last step we have to do is verify our transmission fluid level. In order to do that, you need some way to monitor your transmission fluid pan temperature. All right, so what we're gonna be using here today is a module that I got off Amazon. It's made by VPeak. It's an OBT, OBD2 module. You basically just plug it into your OBD connection on the truck, and then you have to download an app. The, the app that I'm gonna use, it's called OBD Fusion. It's one of the most popular apps out there. There are multiple different ones but obd fusion is one of the most popular ones very user friendly and i'll give you a quick um, overview on how to connect to, to it and and monitor the temps so basically you just plug this into the your, your obd um, connection on the truck download that obd fusion app which this is 30 to 35 dollars for the module the app is ten dollars 9.99 off itunes um, again well worth it you need it to, to to monitor these temperatures so let me show you how to connect it real quick and um and then we'll we'll get into the process of checking the uh the fluid level okay so you're just going to take the v peak module and up underneath your steering wheel i apologize the lighting is not the best but your obd connection is right up underneath here underneath the steering wheel all right so just go ahead and plug it in and you're going to see blue light comes on all right that means it's ready to connect to your phone so let me grab my phone and show you what we have to do to monitor the temperatures. Okay, once you have the OBD connection made, you need to turn the vehicle to the on position. You don't wanna start it. So mine's a 2020 with the push button start. So I'm just gonna press it twice. That turns on the power to the truck. Once that's done, we're gonna go ahead and click the OBD Fusion app. It's gonna open up. We're gonna click connect down the bottom. Mine's gonna look a little bit different because I've already connected it to the truck. The very first time you do this, you're gonna to have to enter um, your vehicle information, year, make, model. It's very self-explanatory. All right, so we're just gonna connect. It's gonna go through a little bit of a connecting process here, running through the systems. 
this takes a few seconds not too bad and uh, okay so now we are connected so what you need to do you need to go into um, here let me go back you click on settings and you need to go into user defined PIDs you're gonna get a warning just press OK now I already have ATF pan and torque converter here what you need to do you won't see those there just yet yours is gonna be blank so you just go to menu new and then you're gonna get this screen let me swap over so when you're looking at all of these um, columns here Nick gives you this information here and I'll take a screenshot I'll put it up on the screen for you you have to enter this information you're so you're gonna make two different user um, custom PIDs that I just showed you user defined PIDs the ATF pan is this column right here the torque converter is right here all right so that's the information you need to enter so let's go back here real quick you don't want to change any other wording over here other than what Nick tells you to change so under name you would put ATF pan let me see if I can go into ATF pan and show you I can okay perfect let me go back here real quick delete that one so my user defined PIDs my ATF pan this is what your column or your the right hand side of the screen should look like all right so all you change is what Nick tells you to change these other columns like category manufacturer you don't change those at all here you you know you would just go type in ATF pan all right hopefully this makes sense but this is what your your screen should look like for ATF pan all right and again Nick gives you all that information I'll put the screenshot on your screen for you and then for the torque converter and again you won't have these when you first go into this app you have to create them by going to menu new and then entering all of this information okay so the torque converter let me just get rid of that that we just created so the torque converter PID would look like this okay so you just want to go down the row all the information that Nick gives you enter all of that information and then down at the bottom you click test so let me just show you what happens when we click test so right now our torque our torque converter temperature is 55.2 if we go back to our pan come down to the bottom and click test 55.2 now in order to monitor these we're gonna go back to the main screen and click on dashboards there you can see our ATF pan and our torque converter temperatures right there now that's what you need to see right now to verify the fluid um, the fluid level for the transmission fluid okay so we're gonna what we have to do is you have to make sure your pan temperature is below 80 degrees to get this process started so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna get under the truck I'm gonna have my wife start the truck and shift through the gears on the um, uh, in the in the S mode the sport mode so she's gonna I'm gonna have her come down shift through the gears and basically just kind of work the transmission fluid through the system once that pan temperature gets between 99 and 111 degrees that's when we have to um, unscrew the overflow plug which I'm gonna show you and and I'll, I'll I'll show you the process once we get under the truck but that's we need this pan temperature between 99 and 111 in order to check the level um, the fluid level properly all right so let's get under the truck and I'll show you what we have to do okay guys I have my wife up up um, behind the wheel she's gonna be starting the truck pretty soon as soon as the temperature reaches 99 degrees again between 99 and 111 this is the overfill plug it's a five millimeter allen wrench so what we're going to do is, once the temperature gets between 99 and 111, we're going to loosen that and the, you're going to see the transmission fluid start to flow out. Once the fluid comes to like a trickle, that's when we're going to tighten this back down. All right, so I'll show this on video. I'll give you guys a look at what it looks like while you're doing it. Now, this is one thing you're going to want to pan for because, again, the fluid is going to be coming out of here. All right, so let me put the camera down and we'll get started. All right, start it and tell me when it's at 99. It's 
All right, guys, temperature just reached above 99. So we're gonna go ahead and remove that. And again, as you can see, it's pouring down. And as soon as that starts to slow, you wanna put this back in and you can stop the truck. All right, it starts starting to slow. All right, right now, and you, you'll, you'll be able to tell when it's slowing down. You don't want it to start dripping. You want it to be more of a trickle. All right, so just like that, go ahead, tighten that back in there, and you're good to go. All right, so we can stop the truck. All right, Cord, stop the truck. And now we'll just go ahead and wipe that off. Tighten this down. I can't remember the spec of this off the top of my head. I'll, I'll put it on the screen for you. But tighten this back down. And you are good to go. We'll take it for a test drive, check for leaks, and that's it. All right, guys, there you have it. That's the transmission cooler install. Hopefully you guys found it helpful. Install overall, not bad. Um, the hardest part about the entire process is just getting your hands in these tight little spots, tight little areas. But Nick's kits are great. They come with everything you need other than the, the fluid pump to get the transmission fluid back into the, the transmission. And then of course, that the, the OBD2 connection in the app that you have to get for your phone. Again, there's other ways you can monitor your temperature, but that is just by far the easiest way. All right, so um yeah if you guys have any questions comments concerns um when you're done with the install make sure you i leave the grill off go for a little ride come back to the garage or house wherever you're at check for leaks you want to check anywhere you were dealing with anywhere there's a hose connection to any kind of fitting the thermostat area the the transmission area just check everywhere and anywhere you were working for leaks um, we took my truck for a little ride left the grill off took it for a ride brought it back to the garage no problems at all no leaking anywhere all right um, so just make sure you check that if there's no leaks you're good to go all right as far as whether or not this transmission cooler is worth it as i mentioned in the beginning of the video i'm not here to debate that that's up to you guys me personally with the towing that i do with the boat i do think it's worth it um you know for anybody who does a lot of towing or anybody who lives in really hot climates i mean without this transmission cooler you can see temps as high as 230 240 i've even heard people say 250 which to me that's crazy high for transmission for etf pan temps and i don't know i'm just not comfortable with that with all the towing that i do so in my opinion well worth it with this transmission cooler you know you're gonna you're gonna see temps much much lower give or take right around that 200 mark give or take obviously depending on what you're doing what kind of driving you're doing and uh, the climate you're in but yeah definitely worth it in my opinion if you guys you know if this is something you guys want to do on your truck hopefully this helps you out give nick a look his contact information will be down below his kits are very good all right he does sell partial kits as well this was the complete kit that you saw on this video definitely recommend it the only other thing you would need other than his kit is the fluid pump the obd2 connection and the app on your phone to monitor the temps you know when you're checking the fluid level so make sure you like and subscribe guys i know there was a lot of people waiting to see this video so share it with your friends if there's anybody who's thinking about this you know make sure they see the video if you guys have any questions comments concerns leave them down below we'll get them addressed as always and uh, we appreciate you watching so all right take care guys we'll see you on the next video